Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. And in today's video, we're going to go over parameters, data tables, and doc strings in Gherkin. Now, in my previous videos in this series, we've used the authentication page as the base of everything. But in this example, we're going to use the products page. And all I'm going to do is write some, scenar some scenarios which say, given I have a product with this ID and this name, and same for maybe a couple of other ones, and then I'm going to say, then I expect the price to be 15 for product 11. We'll keep it nice and simple, but hopefully it'll show you how can you can use these different keywords. So let's jump into the actual Visual Studio. Let's start writing a scenario. So I'm going to say scenario and we'll just say using params because that's not a good scenario name, but this is just more to say to you what type of thing we are using in Gherkin when we're doing this. And it'll make more sense when we write it now. But of course, this wouldn't be a good scenario name otherwise because it doesn't make sense to the context of what we're doing. But I'm going to say, given I have the product ID of, and I think it started with 11. Yep, yeah, so it was down from 11. So we, we'll use a parameter for 11. So to do that, we put in double quotes around it and that turns into a parameter. When you automate this in the back end or in the step file, this would actually come through as a parameter and you could change this to be whatever you want so it'd be like product id and then i'm going to say and product name of and use a parameter and we'll say product and i think it was product two let's double check yep it was product two so that's my given what i've said is given i have the product id of enter whatever value in here because this is a parameter and a product name of enter whatever value we want in here. So if I was to copy and paste this, which I will, I'll copy this and instead of a given, let's use and to make it more readable. This is the exact same step behind if you were to automate this, the only thing we'll change are these values. So it was 10 and I believe it was product one. Yes, it was, and then we've got nine and product two. So we'll say another and of product nine. I'm oh, sorry, ID of nine and product two, perfect. So that just matches the IDs and names we have for these top three rows. I'm not going to do any more of that data, of any more of that table because there's no point. But what you'll see is if you were to automate behind this, these steps are exactly the same. The only thing has changed are these parameters, which is why I've put them in quotations because spec flow, rec and roll cucumber will pick up on this behind the scenes. So I've got my given. Um, and then I'm going to add a then because I don't actually need to action anything on this one. I'm going to say then product ID of 11 has a price of, I can't remember what it was. It was a price of 15. We'll only check 11 just to keep this short and simple as well. And I'll also say and product ID 11 has a date stocked of, and let's copy that so I don't get this wrong. I think they're all the same and then no they're not but we're only doing this one so it doesn't matter so here's my test then what i've said is given i have a product id of 11 and a product name product 2 and i've done these two as well which we could end up integrating into this but i've just added these just to show an example of the parameters working fine and then we do an assertion on product 11 to make sure that is exactly what we want now this is using parameters and it's kind of it's, it's neat in terms of the reusability, but this is really tough to read. It's really hard to see that I have a data table of these three things, and then I'm checking the price and the date stocked of, of the first product in there. So let's add a comma here, comment here, and we'll say using params in the back end, the code will translate these into parameters that we can use, but also say, this is not very neat. There's a time and place to use parameters. This isn't the right one. So how can we convert this into a data table? And you might be asking, what is a data table? So let's write a new scenario. And let's just name this data table. I didn't spell scenario right at all. There we are, data table. And let's add a comment here then. So data table provides structured data input to steps using the pipe symbol. To separate columns and rows. This is a much cleaner way. And when we write it, I'll tell you what happens 
inside the codes. Like I said, in this one, it has it has parameters where it was inside the quotation, so there'll be two parameters per step. But in this one, we'll touch on it once we write it. So I'm going to do the same scenario, just using a data table. Let's see which one you think is more readable. So I'll say, given I have the... Oh, if I could type. Given I have the data, and then I'm going to say pipe of ID at name. So that's our table, and I'm going to say 11. Oh, I need the pipe. I'm going to say 11 and product 2. And what we'll do, we'll copy these as well. So we'll put one here and one here, and we're going to copy these values. So it's 10 and 9 and product 1 and 2. So we'll say ID of 10, ID of 9, and third, the second one has product 1, and second one has product 2. And what I did as well, if you delete the pipe, it'll realign everything. So you can do pipe, and it realigns it on the end. So that's all really good to know. So if you do change your date table and it kind of goes out of position, just delete the last pipe and all is good there. So let's undo that. So we've now set our given using one step, and we don't need these two because that's already done in this given now. And then I wanna do the assertion. So I'm gonna say then product ID, I'm still gonna use a parameter of 11, has the following details. And once again, I'm gonna say price, and you might see where I'm going with this, and date stocked and you probably already guessed it i'm going to take the price of 15 here and the date stocked of 2021 awesome and that's using a date table so i've i've just created the exact same scenario here but using a data table and which one do you think is more readable. I know straight away I would rather look at this instead of this parameter. Now, like I've said before, in this series, we're not going to automate the code behind it. I can do that if you find that useful. If you do, drop some comments down below. And if I have enough of them, I'll definitely create another series about automating behind it. But behind the scenes, they do act a little bit differently, of course, because they are different steps. This one is just two steps, and this one is five steps. And the difference being is, Behind the scene, there'll be a data table object that you can traverse and you can do with whatever you want. So you'll still be able to handle all this. You would just probably loop over on this one and then you'd get the values out on this one. It's still very simple to do, but behind the scenes, you do have different objects between them. These will go through as two separate strings. And this, like I say, is a data table object, which whatever tool you use into create your BDD framework is going to understand what this is. You'll have no problem. It also does look very much like scenario outline tables, but the key difference is this is inside the actual step and a scenario outline has an examples keyword and your table is down below. And in this case, these are all treated as just one scenario because that's what it is, just one scenario. Whereas if you had an examples, it'd be multiple scenarios. So don't get those two confused because I've seen that happen before where people are creating data tables when they wanted to create multiple scenarios and the other way around. And just to finish off this video, I said I wanted to touch on doc strings because I didn't really find the need to create a completely new new video for this because it'd be very straightforward. But in this example, I'm not going to use anything on the website. I'm just going to call this doc string. And as always, let's add a comment. I'm just going to say use to pass long strings into a step. So a really good example of this could be a contact us form where you want to write a big paragraph, but what you don't want to do is this. Let's say when I send a message and then say, this and then you want a paragraph this and a paragraph this and it just wouldn't work because you've got long strings of text and the way you can handle this is using a doc string and the way to do this is adding three backticks here and three backticks at the end and then you put your paragraph inside it so you could say i am contacting you to ask about your car's extended warranty but you were not around so I wanted to write this large paragraph to ask 
you to subscribe. Now, what you're seeing here is instead of having like a long string in here, you can add this doc string and, and your BDE tool will handle this. And it just makes things a lot more readable for you whenever you want to put large paragraphs. It could be assertions, you could be writing something, it could be anything. But I just wanted to get this covered as well, rather than having its own separate video, because it's a very simple concept. But it's something I think that definitely needs to be shown as part of this series. And that's all for this. We've gone through parameters, data tables, doc strings. We've described the difference between a data table and a scenario outline and example. So you're in a good position now to write some solid Gherkin and also understand how to improve other feature files in Gherkin that you're reading. As always, if you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. I've also enabled super thanks on my videos. So if you do find this video or the whole series useful, you can donate to help contribute towards the running of my channel and of my website using super thanks. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.